Yeah. Not the actual. No, not the actual. What about the, what about the cases where they have, uh, they do a, an experiment where they're viewing a particle, no, excuse me, I think um, they took a piece of epithelial cell and they, they actually had one piece in California, another piece was moved to like Phoenix or some other distance and they subjected one, one to a stimulus and they measured the other piece of it, uh, say a thousand miles away, and they, they noticed that the timing was instantaneous that the two both responded in exactly the same way, exactly the same time. That's another aspect of non-locality? Yes. Okay. Yes, because remember, both are looking at the projection. Okay. They're both projections. Yes, from the Holland. So whatever happens to one, it happens instantaneously there. And what's more even entertaining is to, to confirm instantaneously. You have to have two observers at two places. But then observers appear too because of the mirror. Really, consciousness is one. So if what, whatever one observer observes, the other observer must observe the same thing because in, in reality, both observers are one as consciousness. Do you get it? Yeah. So this is what they don't understand, that the observer and the consciousness are same. When I say same, not strictly same, because consciousness can see the observer, the observer cannot see the consciousness. But in the holographic theory, what is really amazing is this is where the observer is, this is where the consciousness is. When it passes through, this reference beam and this consciousness are in phase because of the coherence. So whatever this observer sees, oh, consciousness is aware of it because they are in phase. But the ob observer cannot see the consciousness. Why? Because one of the components is missing. The awareness side is missing. That is why the, the, the observer cannot see consciousness. Because vectorially, this equals this vector plus this vector. This alone cannot equal that vector because this is missing. Can you see that? Like a parallelogram of forces, if you see what I mean. They, this is made up of two components. How about when they're doing an experiment and where the, the, the viewer is actually, by his presence and observing, uh, affecting what's being observed? Uh, for example, a particle that will wink in and be in physical reality and then suddenly disappear, only to reappear later. Uh, just basically where it's going back and forth between different realities and how, again, the observer, by the action of his observation of the particle, impacts the particle's existence or even, even presence. Is that part of non-locality? Or am I going way off base here? No, fantastic question. Again, just like yesterday, this was the ultimate question. I hope you would, you had, you would ask and you did. <laughs> no, here it is. People at the moment in quantum physics believe that the, the observer, or if you like consciousness, they don't know the difference. Now you know the difference vectorially, there is a difference. They think the observer or consciousness, they, they change those terms interchangeably because they don't know the difference between the two. But we'll say, see observer or consciousness, whichever. They say in quantum physics, it, it is the consciousness or the observer that collapses the wave function. That's what you are saying. Right. Right? And that's what they believe now. That's what they, but but here, here is the, the fun part. You must get this today. David Bohm and De Broglie and all those, they believe in one fact, and that is they don't believe in the collapse of the wave function. 
the quantum mechanics of David Bohm doesn't believe in the collapse of the wave function. Every other quantum theory believes that. Because David Bohm says, what is there to collapse is only projected from the film. So in the David Bohm quantum mechanics, there's no collapse. And that rules out a whole lot of problems immediately of the observer and, observer and the Schrodinger's cat experiment. And till you open the box, you don't know whether the cat is alive or dead. And I, I, I make a lot of jokes about this. I did this in San Rafael. There were a lot of quantum physicists. And I said, why are you worried when the cat is in the box? Why are you so concerned whether it's dead or alive? It can be only one or the other depending on that radioactive substance when it will trigger that thing so the cyanide will be released and the cat will be dead. They looked at me in amazement. That's an experiment, that's a thought experiment. Why are you asking that question? I said, you are always concerned whether that cat is alive or dead. Can't the, can't the cat just die of its own cause? Can't it? Now, it's nothing to do with the experiment. It was time to go for the cat. So it went. They were, they, 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 they were just shocked. Yeah, but yeah, that, is not, uh, that is not part of the assumption here, they said. But, but it can happen. People drop off just like that. Why can't the cat drop off? It was time for it to go. Nothing to do with that radioactive substance. So, your assumptions are not right in this experiment. Let me give you a second one. That will even, even send you even more mad, I said, to the quantum physicists. Really mad. I said, you said the observer collapses the wave function. Okay? You're saying that to them. Yeah. Okay. That's what they're saying. I said, and the observer is outside the box. Are you telling me there is no observer inside the cat? Can't the observer inside the cat collapse that wave function? I mean, he's got a soul in it, he's alive. A cat does observe. Otherwise, how can I, how can a cat catch a mouse? Now they're really going mad. They respond. They were baffled. He said, "But that is not part of the assumption." But I said. That's what the problem is. You don't see the common sense way. There is an observer in the cat. If the observer collapses the function, what's the point of the experiment? The cat can collapse the function by itself, looking at it. And what more, can it die its own death? Nothing to do with the experiment. So, David Bohm, I think, I believe in my heart, with others, De Bruyne, it doesn't collapse the wave function. It is... If you get it right in the hologramic way, it only projects it. And, and Einstein had that problem. So Einstein said, are you telling me that the moon doesn't exist if I don't look at it? It is just a wave up there? I find that difficult to believe. That's what he said. I just, don't, I just can't believe that it exists only because I'm looking at it. And the wave function of the moon collapses and looks like a moon to me. I, I, I cannot accept that. Although I'm in a room, I can't see the moon. I can't believe the fact that the moon isn't there because I'm not observing it. And that's why Einstein's heartfelt opinion was there's something not quite right with quantum mechanics. There's a hidden variable here, and we don't know what that is. Do you get me now? So with all the multiverse universe theory or multi-universe or other interpretations of quantum theory, Many worlds theory or the other ones or the other ones, there's so many of them, uh, all believe in the collapse of the wave function. While David Bohm's theory is the only one, including De Bruyne, uh, that the, the collapsing of the wave function doesn't exist there. And, and that makes life so much easier and simpler as well because you then see, okay, I can see the simplicity in God's creation. It's musical. It's truly musical. There is simplicity about it. And it's fully automated. The whole thing is fully automated. It's 
It's under cosmic law. You know, he runs the universe, and you can see the simplicity of it, how he runs it. He runs it through this non-quantum hologram, which happens to see as two states, alive and asleep. In the sleep state, you see this. In the awake state, you see the recording side, the reality, the oneness of things. And, uh, and it, it, it agrees with our perception that the real object is one, virtues are many. You know, like if there are 100 mirrors here, I will see 100 images, virtual images, but the real image is only one. And, and that agrees with our perception in real life. So the observers are many because they are, they are inside the mirror. In other words, they are on this side. They are in the mirror. But in reality, because they are, if you can imagine this hologram as a mosaic, so many squares in it, you know, like crossword puzzle, each one being a, each observer. Uh, because of the free will, they are all floating around everywhere the way they want to take their mirror. Um, you suddenly see what I'm, I'm, I'm getting at. So that, that explains um, the, the non-locality.